Hello beautiful, it's that time again. Oh wait a minute, hold on, hold on, that was too loud, let me try again. Hello beautiful. Okay, wait, 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 I think I can do one better. I just wanna get it right, because after all, this is the perfect episode. It's time for your wake up call. <laughs> Welcome back to this week's episode of Wake Up Call TV. I can't wait to dive into the episode today. We have some very cool things to share with you related to the topic of perfectionism. Now, I'm sure you don't deal with perfectionism, but um, I do. <laughs> and I'm gonna be sharing with you a really fun little outtake video um, that came up as a result of the video we created last week and some of the posts we had on the blog in response to uh, our Kim Kardashian episode. Oftentimes people are afraid to talk about perfectionism because our perfectionism creates more perfectionism and we don't want to really look behind the curtain um, to even admit that we do it. But I would say nearly 100% of my coaching clients do deal with this issue often in their lives. And as women, there are so many areas that we're supposed to be responsible for and we're supposed to have all together that I think we probably um, deal with it even more than men. So I'm really excited to dive into this topic today, something that's typically sort of a heavy energy, but we're gonna actually have some fun with it and see if we can um, allow you to create some freedom and some space from it. All right. So let's dive in. Okay, so where do we start with perfectionism? I think the first place would be to uh, take an honest look at where might perfectionism be working in your life right now. So how we're gonna do that is I'm gonna have you stop the video, grab a piece of paper, and start writing down places that you suspect you may be being hindered by perfectionism. Now before you stop the camera, let's talk a little bit more about it. So. How can you identify that perfectionism is the thing that's happening? It's a little tricky because it often will show up as something else. So it might look more like I'm annoyed with my child's behavior or why isn't my husband doing the right thing? A way to kind of get underneath all of that is to feel into the energy of perfectionism. Perfectionism has an energy that's kind of choppy and um, rigid and it also to me this may sound weird but it, it also has sort of an energy of a shallow breath right so there's a sort of feeling about perfectionism so it's the opposite of flow so flow tends to be smooth and deep and confident and perfectionism is the opposite of that so feeling into the energy is one way you can identify if that's what's happening the other way you can identify it, is if you're up in your head. So if you're trying to logic something out, if you're making lists, if you're doing pros and cons, if you're trying to think it through or rethink it, um, those are all things that may point to perfectionism being at play. Because when you're really in the flow, you're gonna be operating more from your heart space and from your energy space rather than from your head because head is where fear lies, and fear is the domain of the funky monkey. Another way to recognize it is if things are just not going right. So even if you use the term right or wrong, perfectionism, those judgments are indicators that you've fallen into feeling like there is a right or there is a wrong and that you're not there. So use those all as uh, ways to kind of get a, a glimpse into what the perfectionism is happening for you. All right, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna pause the video. I want you to write down at least three areas or three things in your life right now where you think perfectionism is holding you back. All right, pause the video. Great job, thanks for doing that. You can go ahead and put it aside for a minute. We're gonna come back to it in just a second. But first of all, I want to break the ice a little bit. Often when we talk about perfection, everybody sort of tightens up and gets really scared because, of course, we don't want to talk about our perfectionism because we're trying to be perfect. So we've got all these masks up and it makes it really hard to sort of crack the ice. And, um, and so I thought what a, a fun way to do that would be to share a little bit about my own perfectionism. A place that it showed up for me was last week when I was making the first episode of Wake Up 
call TV. And it showed up in so many different places. So perfectionism looks like lots of different things. It may look like uh, you're mad at your husband because he forgets to turn on the, uh, the recorder for the video. Or it may look like um, you know, you're just mad at your children. But really it's perfectionism that can be driving all of that stuff. So what's driving perfectionism? Well, what's always driving perfectionism is fear. It can't exist without fear. So you, you're trying to be perfect because you're protecting against something. And that is where the freedom lies. Is if you can figure out what is that thing I'm really afraid of, the perfectionism can just sort of melt away. So another way perfection shows up is we give our power away to people who we think are perfect. So there may be a coach that you follow, or there may be somebody in your life, or a coworker, or a boss, somebody that you're just sure is perfect, and if you could only be like them, or get to where they are, then you would be happy to. And so I wanna break that myth today. In case I might be a person that you think is perfect because I have a TV show and I look a certain way, I wanna give you the uh, backdoor view of what it looked like to create that video from last time. Now, please note, we did not have the foresight nor the budget to hire a documentary crew to follow us around creating that episode. So we took some liberties in doing a reenactment and I'm gonna share that with you now. All right, here you go. Are you sure there's enough light for the shot? It seems maybe like it's a little dark. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I can't wait to edit this video. This is gonna be awesome. What's that on my teeth? What? Look. It's not that bad. Coach, it's me. I need an emergency session. Yes, I nailed it. I forgot to turn the sound on. Hello, Coach. Me again. I need another emergency session. I like what we have so far, but could you be a little more you? What do you mean, be more me? Who the heck else could I be? If this video sucks, it's your fault, not mine. I wonder if you could help me for a second. I have a video I have to shoot and it has to get done tonight. Would you be willing to help me? Please. Hi, Mom. I'm glad you're going to watch the video. No, all you do is push that triangly button at the bottom. Uh, can you see that picture of uh, Kim Kardashian at the beginning? No, that's Kim Kardashian. That's not me. I was having the worst dream and you were there and you were there and we were trying to make this video but nothing would work out and I just wanted it to be perfect but I couldn't and it's so nice to wake up and realize that perfect is really just a bad dream okay I hope that was as fun for you as it was for me actually it wasn't that fun for me at all and during it it was a whole lot of drama but as you can see, we made it through to the other side. So what I want to do with that video is use it as a way to illustrate uh, how we can get underneath this idea of perfectionism to what we're really afraid of. All right, so for me, uh, what I noticed is that it was focused on, I want the video to be perfect. I want it to be the best quality. I want it to be the best sound. I want to look really good. I want to say the perfect thing so that I can reach the audience in the perfect way, right? And what was that really about? What was I actually 
actually afraid of. So this is where you have to get very honest with yourself and just be willing to take a look. For me, I was afraid to really be seen as myself. I was afraid to just show up and give you what I've got because I was afraid you wouldn't get it. I was afraid you wouldn't like me. All right, now can you feel the truth of that? Can you feel how when you just get really honest, that perfectionism sort of melts away because there's not a need for it anymore. You've put some light on the thing you were afraid of and it's not so scary now. So what I want you to do is pause the video so you can have some quiet reflection time to allow yourself to just settle into the exploration of what might you really be afraid of. So just pick one of your items on your list, something that you notice you're having perfectionism around and see if you could delve into what am I actually afraid of there. All right, so pause the video, take a look, and then come back when you're ready. All right, welcome back. Congratulations on sticking with it this far. I know this can be a little prickly to look into these dark places, but there is so much freedom on the other side. All right, so now that you're aware and awake to the truth of what's really underneath your perfectionism, what can you do with that? Well, first of all, I want you to notice how waking up often allows the perfectionism to just melt away. So notice if you don't feel a little more peaceful and a little softer than you did when you came in, right? So awareness is huge for allowing yourself to create some freedom. So that's step one. Step two to move through this perfectionism is to be gentle with yourself. So the very definition of perfectionism is that we're sort of beating ourselves with a stick. Everything is not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. Um, and it's a way we sort of keep ourselves moving, you know? But if you could choose, consciously choose to put your whip down, you will notice you create room for gentleness. You choose to give yourself a break. If you're not gonna do it, who will? All right, step three, and this is my favorite one, is to have some fun with it. When we are in perfection mode, we are taking ourselves way too seriously. Why? Because we're so afraid, because whatever we're trying to perfect feels like life or death, okay? But guess what? It isn't, it's just your mind. So there's huge freedom in being willing to laugh at yourself, add a little humor, do something silly. Um, if you find yourself in perfection mode, hop up and do the chicken dance. Whatever it takes to sort of move your body or move your energy in a way that's completely and radically outside the box, you will notice that it will open a door for you to move right on through the perfectionism and onto the freedom that lives on the other side. Bonus round. All right, now that you have this new awareness of perfectionism and how it plays out in your life, you're going to need to exercise that muscle in your life. So here's the challenge. It's called the perfect game. And here's how it works. So Buddhists believe that all of life and all of creation are already perfect. Not perfect as in couldn't be better, but perfect as in complete and whole, exactly as they are. So the perfect game is designed to help you learn to create and recognize perfect in your own life. So here's how you play. You're gonna choose a time period. So you can decide to do it for one hour. If you want to be really bold, you can decide to do it for an entire day. But give yourself a time period. And as you play the perfect game, here are the rules. Whatever is presented, accept it. Whatever is proposed, choose it. And whatever situation occurs, recognize it as perfect. Okay? It sounds easy, but you will be amazed at how challenging it actually is. You will also be amazed at how many miracles will begin to occur when you open up this space for the new definition of perfectionism in your own life. Wanna play? So thanks for tuning in today. I want you to remember that there's no such thing as perfection and there's no reason to make yourself miserable chasing after something that doesn't exist. So lose your perfectionism, lose your suffering. Consider this your wake-up call.